I just, uh, Dr. Henry, um, jumping off from your um, comment there that you're going to be determining the path forward for all healthcare workers in the coming weeks, I had been planning to ask you um, what the vaccination rates are at Kelowna General Hospital because the other day you said that surgical postponements were due to staff being impacted by COVID. But I've heard from several healthcare workers there in the meantime who tell me they've actually been short staffed for months. It has uh, nothing to do with COVID, and particularly when it comes to, to nurses, they're just really short staffed. So, are COVID infections and in staff really impacting hospitals or is it a matter of staffing issues that are having an impact right now? It is all of the above. As we know, there's been a number of different issues in the interior in particular that have been affected by this. And yes, there have been staff impacts from COVID infections and from people who have been exposed. But there have been also staff shortages, as you know, for some time. And I know Minister Dix knows more about that. I think it's fair to say that it's uh, it's a challenging time in our healthcare system as well. Though, I would say that we've uh, at, at uh, Kelowna General Hospital, at Vernon Jubilee Hospital, Royal Inland Hospital, we've been doing more uh, surgeries than we've done before, and we report on that regularly. And that uh, reflects the extraordinary work of people there. So, uh, there are challenging staffing challenges in our healthcare system that are connected to. I think in the last couple of months, especially extraordinary demand, ongoing challenges in staffing uh, the system. And uh, that's why we've made such, um, ex I think, exceptional investments by the standard of any province in our healthcare system. But nonetheless, those are challenges that exist. But when you have circumstances such as uh, people off sick in terms of COVID-19, that has an impact as well. So all of those things are involved. There have been uh, the cancellation of a small number of surgeries, I think 50 coming over the coming weeks uh, of the coming week uh, in terms of uh, cancellations of surgeries at Kelowna General Hospital and that reflects the adjustments that we make all the time based on the circumstances we see in the terms of we are moving resources and moving staff, for example, into emergency rooms uh, this week as we announced yesterday to support uh, people in the heat wave, to support people relate to the smoke and to deal with COVID-19. So there are challenges at Kelowna General, there are challenges in other uh, healthcare facilities in the province for uh, healthcare professionals and healthcare workers, and we're working through those. And COVID-19 simply adds to that. Penny, do you have a follow-up? I do, and I'm glad, Minister, that you brought up the uh, surgical renewal, but I will leave this open to Dr. Henry if she wants to respond as well. Um, you know, it's anecdotal evidence at this point, but all signs point to a lot of nurses leaving the profession in, in significant numbers, in part because of burnout from the pandemic. But I'm also hearing again and again that unrealistic expectations for the surgical renewal um, are really, um, you know, grinding people down. And a lot of nurses are generally feeling devalued, and this has really shattered morale for a lot of those who remain. So I want to know what you plan to do about this dual crisis of morale and staffing in healthcare. I think. Uh uh, this has been an extraordinary year in healthcare, and the surgical renewal plan, which has added resources and added nurses and added anesthesiologists and added those helping to book uh, surgeries, has had a profound and positive effect. There's also uh, and uh, and a positive effect across the system. The changes that have been made under the surgical renewal plan to address the fact that in March and in April and in May of uh, 2020, we canceled non-urgent elective surgeries. We did indeed cancel some surgeries also in this uh, in the past uh, third wave of COVID-19. We, uh, we addressed that by responding as you'd expect the health system to respond. And uh, I think we've done an exceptional job in doing that. And that job wasn't done by me. It was done by surgeons and nurses and healthcare workers and health sciences professionals across the system. It is, in, uh, it is of course, a challenge to meet uh, the surgical demands of, uh, of a society that's both growing and um, uh, the increasing demands of a society that to a degree is aging. But I think we've done an exceptional job. Look, before COVID-19, we went in terms of hip and knee replacements from 14,250 in 2016-17 to uh, almost 19,000 in a short period of time. And that meant uh, significant demands on the system, which we met with more resources in the system, but it also meant thousands of people getting their surgery sooner than they had done before. 
similarly with MRIs, similarly with other types of surgeries. So the surgical renewal plan has been exceptional and it's been delivered in an exceptional way by doctors and nurses and health sciences professionals. And of course, of course, everyone working in the system in a pandemic, in the public health emergency that is the overdose crisis. And in, uh, in this time and in the challenge for public health care in BC, uh, this is a really difficult time for everybody and we're doing everything we can to support people while delivering the services, especially the surgical services, that people in BC expect and deserve. Come on. You know, thank you, thank you for bringing this up, Penny. Um, I can't speak to the surgical services particularly, but I know from my personal experience in um, pandemics and in um, crises that we've seen, particularly ones that go on this long, it is not surprising to see people being burnt out. We we all want this to be over. We all wanted this to be over last summer. Um, and, you know, we, we have to deal with the reality that we are dealt with and nurses have been on the front lines of this from the beginning. They've had to access PPE, they've had to change the way that we interact with patients, whether it's in a community setting, whether it's in a hospital. The, the pressure that we have had as healthcare workers through this pandemic has been over and above the pressures of trying to maintain families and relationships and all of the other things that we as a, as a community are dealing with. So it does not surprise me that people are burning out, that they're leaving their profession. I see that from physicians. I see that from my ICU colleagues who are having challenges trying to find that balance again in our lives. I see it from public health physicians. I see it from uh, all across the health sector. And, you know, we, we've also done uh, the surveys, as you know, that help us understand the issues that we're dealing with in our communities and families across the country or across the province as well. So these are, these are very challenging times. These are the things that we see after this type of, a, of an event that has happened and when it's gone on so long. So we do need to do what we can to support nurses, to support all of the healthcare workers in our settings across the province. And one of the really important ones was providing um, access as soon as we possibly could to healthcare workers to immunization so that we can support them um, taking that burden of fear and risk of COVID off as much as we possibly can. So we do need to support each other through this. It's, uh, it's unfortunate, you know, I wanted it to be over too. I didn't want us to be in this position right now, but we are and we need to keep going together. Um, and part of that is making sure that we support each other to get immunized as quickly as possible and especially as we go into the fall.